Welcome back, everyone, to Highlighted in All Sports Culture podcast. Me and Sam are back Tuesday, February 22nd of 2022. Two, 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 two. Pretty cool. Wait, no, two, 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 two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Yes, yes. Um, There's a zero in there, so. Yeah, yeah. We'd have to wait 200 years for the for that next one to happen, but I, you were close. I think we should live until that day because that'd be a pretty cool day. I'd like to see it live. Um, but yeah, we are back with another episode. Um, NFL season is gone, so as you know, we don't know kind of what our schedule is. We didn't really we didn't have a podcast on Friday. We're having one now. I think we're gonna do one Friday, and that will be Sully's first podcast back, which is very cool. Um, we'll get the whole gang back together, but. We'll let you guys know a full schedule then. Um, but until now, we got some things to talk about. Instead of kind of primarily focusing on one thing, like Takeaway Tuesday or like the NBA trade deadline, we are going to do what we sometimes do and kind of go over a bunch of mini topics. Um, and that today is the first one going to be Juwan Howard and his altercation with Wisconsin and their head coach, Greg Gard. And then we'll move on and talk about, what was the second thing we're talking about again? Going completely blank. <laughs> It oh, was... hey, Kurt, it's your favorite thing. It's your favorite thing. And I'm honestly shocked that you oh, texted it to me saying all... that you would wanted to talk about it. All... I'm like, are you sure? Yeah, the All-Star game will go over kind of the whole weekend. The game itself, um, the little stupid dunk contest that happened as well. And then we'll wrap it up with a cool segment, one of my one I'm looking forward to doing, and that's going over where we think 10 quarterbacks will be ending up um by the start of the nfl season that could be as that could be a free agent like Jameis winston or a big name guy like deshaun or aaron Rodgers, where their future is up in the air so we'll talk about that when we get there but first topic is one that kind of came about on sunday when it happened and that was jawan howard he has been suspended five games which is the remainder of the regular season he'll be back for the big 10 tournament and the NCAA tournament, if they make it, but they probably won't because they have been shit this year. Um, and he was also fined forty thousand dollars for hitting Wisconsin assistant coach Joe Krabenhoft in the face. You can say it was a hit, a punch, a slap, whatever it was. He got in contact with him. He got into the altercation with Greg Gard. Greg Gard and him were kind of going at it with the handshake line at the end of the game. Um, to give context on what happened. Uh, Greg Gard called timeout with 15 seconds left. Um, Wisconsin was up by 15. And the reason why he called timeout was because the shot clock was running down and he wanted to call a timeout to give his bench warmers, the guys they usually aren't in the game because obviously they're up by 15. Not at time, not any reason to panic, get a new shot clock, go out the game, win the game. You can understand it from Gard's standpoint, but Juwan Howard thinking it was really stupid to call a timeout with 15 seconds left. And to be fair, I get, I kind of get his side, but I more so get guards explanation. Regardless though, if you're mad about a timeout being called, you say to your team, we're going to fucking kill them when we see them in the big 10 tournament, not I'm going to go make an altercation about this in the uh, handshake line. So yeah, they get into the uh, handshake line, which some people are saying on Twitter, that it needs to be removed because of stuff like this. And that's stupid. That is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. We see so many times in NCAA tournaments um, where the handshake line, you see a lot of touching moments between athletes and players and coaches. I think it needs to continue. That's my personal opinion. Um, And regardless, Jawan Howard, let's not forget last year in the big 10 tournament. I think I know this more so than anyone else because it's against my team, but he almost got an altercation with Mark Turgeon, the Maryland head coach. Um, so this isn't the first time it's happened with Jawan Howard. Um, but Jawan Howard, some people are thinking he should have been fired. He should have walked away. Instead, he gets a five game suspension, $50,000 fine, and will be able to coach Michigan in the big 10 tournament. And if they make a run potentially the NCAA tournament. So Sam, you think it's the right call with five games, a $50,000 fine. Uh, what are your thoughts on the whole situation? Uh, yeah, it's the right call. Um, there's no place for that. Like just straight up, there is no place to swing at a coach just because of a timeout call. Like I know Michigan's been kind of rough this year and they just got their ass beat by one of the best teams in the country. Um, but come on, dude, 
you can't get pressed over a timeout call when you just got your ass kicked, you know, like that shouldn't be the reason you should be getting mad. The reason you should be getting mad is that you didn't coach your team well enough and that your guys didn't play well enough to beat Wisconsin. And I know Wisconsin's a great team and all, but this is your own fault and this is your team's fault. And you guys just got to execute better in order to win the game and not get pissed over a little small thing that you're going to get nitpicky about because you're just trying to find a reason to victimize yourself. That's kind of how I feel about the whole thing. Um, it just kind of felt like they were trying to find a reason to, you know, think that they were wronged or some bullshit. Uh, and then I see all the talk about, oh, Greg Gard started the whole thing. He grabbed Juwan Howard's arm. No, Juwan Howard was chirping Greg Gard while he was walking up to him. This isn't a whole thing where the Badger started it and they were asking for it. No, 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 no. Juwan Howard was just absolutely just, you could see he was visibly annoyed the entire situation and that he was the one that kind of instigated the whole thing. And he swung like, and he started the whole fight between teams. Like it wasn't just a, he swings once and then it was broken up. No, 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 no. He swung. And then all the players like started to brawl. Yeah. So he didn't just instigate an injury on the assistant coach. He had his players in danger. He had Wisconsin's players in danger. That was, that just shows the whole scale of the little moment that he did because he's the leader of that team. Like this isn't like, I know we can talk about player led teams and all that, but in college basketball and college sports, the coach is way more important than it is in the major sports. And so when you're the coach, you have to, you know, emulate what you want your program to be. And when your head coach does that, that just sets a bad example and your players are going to follow suit and it just gives your whole program a bad look. And that's exactly what Joan Howard did. I was aware of the Maryland situation um, beforehand. So I know about Joan Howard's history. Um, But yeah, I think this suspension is fully warranted. Um, him getting a coach in the big 10 tourney, whatever. I don't care. I mean, they're going to get smoked anyways. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, this is, were you watching it live when it happened, by the way? No, I just go on Twitter and I'm like, Jawan Howard, what the fuck? And I'm like, Jawan Howard up to, and then I saw, (laughs) and then I saw you in the chat when you were like, Jawan Howard just punched a dude or you said, I don't know. Someone said something in the (laughs) chat and I was like, what the heck? I went on Twitter and then it's like, you could see the clip. And I was like, this is damn, that's crazy. Um, But yeah, I think John Rothstein, who's one of my favorite analysts in college basketball, summed it up really well. He said, a head coach is a symbol for a program and its university. There's no place for this at any level of sport. A significant suspension is coming. I mean, the only thing I will say about this to kind of give credit or play both sides of it really is when Greg Gard at the end, you know, when he was like going like this, <laughs> that was the most bizarre thing ever. Um, so that would be the only, like, there, there was no reason for that either. I, I mean, I get, it's kind of funny, but like, I saw that and I was like, what the fuck is he doing? I don't know, dude. It yeah. was funny though. I'll give him that. <laughs> and it's just like the thing with suspensions in college basketball is i just feel like it's very flawed per se because yeah go back to mark few when he had the whole dui thing he only got suspended one game and i would say dui is much worse or not five times as worse as less worse than hitting the guy yeah um and you go back to whoever the clemson player was that kind of just ran into wendell Moore when wendell was going up for the layup like he went straight into him that was a one game suspension as well. It's just, yeah. I wish the NCAA would do a better job of finding kind of the standard of what suspension should be. And I don't necessarily think it's NCAA, but you can really make that argument for all aspects of sports. Yeah. You just, the consistency is really what I care about. And if we can all come to a common medium where we decide what is the right punishment, then I'm good with that. But regardless though, I completely agree with everything you said, Jawan Howard um, I mean, you, a lot of high expectations for this Michigan team this year. It has not been hitting and, uh, heat of the moment. He probably just got really upset by it. So nothing really else I have to say on my end, unless you have anything else. 
Oh, I was I was watching it before the Marquette game. And so I was watching it. And, yeah, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> um, but I was and confusing thing. I'm a I'm not a Badger basketball fan. I am a fan of Badger football, but I'm not like passionate about Badger football, but I'm passionate about Marquette basketball. It's weird. Uh, don't don't get confused. But so I, I, I have a very good understanding of the Badgers, but I don't give a fuck about what they do. Um, so I was watching this game and I'm like, okay, the Badgers are killing them. Great. Uh, I don't like Michigan anyways. Um, and then the game's ending and then the whole fight breaks out. And I'm like, oh my God. And then I go on a- the AAC channel. I'm like, yeah, Jawan Howard just punched someone. And I was just like, what? <laughs> I'm like, am I the only one watching this game? Yeah. And then I go, I'm going to record this and post it. And uh, self plug, uh, I uh, ASC YouTube kind of been popping off recently because we changed what we're doing on it. Uh, Juwan Howard clip got 100k views because I was fast as fuck on posting it. Uh, so uh, everyone, go subscribe. Just well, saying. Just, yeah, and just want to say, um, next week will be the first edition of the bracketology videos for me. So make sure Beautiful. you mark it on the calendar. Mark it on the calendar. Um, definitely one of my favorite things to do. But we'll move on now. We'll talk about another thing that happened this past weekend, something that I don't give a fuck about, but we're going to talk about it anyway. <laughs> Why did you want to talk about this? Well, I did, no, no, it I was do, your idea. I, I do have some thoughts. I do have some thoughts. I do have some thoughts. But yeah, there are thoughts. Uh, are we going to focus? We're not going to talk about Friday at all. We're going to no, talk no, no, about no. Saturday. Let's and talk Sunday. about, yeah, yeah and Saturday I think the primarily the two things with Saturday is the three point contest, which Everyone should be agreeing now with the current state that the dunk contest is in. The three point contest should be the last event that happens. It is much better than the dunk contest, my opinion. And you're going to save the best uh, for last. I, I just think that, okay, I think Zach Levine and Aaron Gordon spoiled the hell out of us. I agree. Um, and our expectations for the dunk contest went through the roof after those two went at it for years um and Aaron Gordon got robbed twice uh but we'll, we'll we won't leave it we'll leave it there uh but even so yeah Jalen Green's effort on that first dunk with oh, the whole was... I, I mean, couldn't watch my eyes were like fucking blinded by that sight but let's talk about the three-point contest really quick before we move on to that because the three-point contest has been really fun to watch over the last couple of years I would say we see a lot of great shooting performances but no other than no one would expect it. Carl Anthony Towns won this. The big man won the. Did you guess I it? I expected or something? it. Yeah, I did actually. I had a friend. I was pretty proud of myself. I had a friend who placed. Uh, he's a Timberwolves fan, so he placed okay. plus a thousand odds on him to win, and uh, got free himself, money. Got himself a nice little payday. Um, free money. But Carl Anthony Towns is the champion, and even though Sam and my friend betted it, <laughs> it definitely wasn't the uh, the betting in the common favor among most NBA fans. Carl Anthony Towns put up an unbelievable final round. I couldn't even—I don't know what the exact score was he had. Twenty-nine. Um, but he ultimately won this three-point contest. And like I said, I know we had the question: best shooting big man of all time on the old sports culture picture that's for a whole different topic but regardless it's really cool to see Carl Anthony Towns at such a tall range be able to shoot the three ball and it's cool to see just how good shooters are in today's era because of what Steph Curry has done for this league and the shooting league yeah I mean the three-point contest is definitely really exciting I like the do ball edition also uh that came I think it was last year was it the year prior I don't remember um, but they added the do ball in there. I really like that addition. Um, but it, I mean, that's just a way to run up the score even more because it counts for three, which is kind of funny. Um, but the old competition, yeah, I agree. The three point competition is the one that's consistently the best one. Um, sometimes they don't pick the right people to be in it though. Uh, but most of the time they get it right. And Carl Anthony Towns was just awesome in this, uh, that, last round was excellent by him he could not miss uh the sucky part before the three-point competition though was uh not steph curry being in the three-point contest he was in another contest uh called the 
whatever that drinking game was. Um, yeah. I thought that was going to be the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. And I'm sure the NBA got a fat paycheck from HBO to put that on air because they gave him like a whole 10 minutes. Um, but it turns out the dunk contest was worse than that. So that's something to say. But uh, yeah, I didn't bet Carl Anthony Towns. I thought about it, but I didn't do it. But I did pick him to win. And sadly, I didn't bet it. I could Sam, I want, you to, I want you to know I am nine days so clean. Of, nine uh, days clean of uh, sports betting. Very proud of myself. Um, you know, I. I'm a better man. I feel electric right now. I feel cleansed. I feel like You're I'm a Aaron, better man. I feel like I'm Aaron Rodgers with that whole thing he did. What's the whole like therapy thing he did where he said on the pad? I will get the I will get the definition for you right now. Cool. But yeah, I feel like that where I just like cleansed all the bad shit out of my body. That's how I feel with betting. Um, so will I put some shit back into me when March Madness starts? We'll have to see um but regardless it's when you're gonna go through withdrawal and you're dude, gonna... facts it's like uh, right now i'm at like i'm at therapy and then i'm just gonna say fuck therapy and go back to bedding when march that's Madness when you're is. gonna relapse and yeah. go back uh exactly. well to let you know it is known as panchakarma cleanse which is three days of ghee therapy where you consume only ghee until you evacuate at both ends so uh, if you guys don't know, that means you shit your brains out and vomit your brains out. Um, and then you do one day of therapeutic vomiting, one day of laxative is therapy. Thera- what is therapeutic vomiting? How is that therapeutic at all? I think it's just like getting all the shit out of your system. I'm like, do you do know. it? And you're like, oh, that felt so good. Like, I don't, uh, I don't know. know. It just sounds like you just have food poisoning and you're just. I don't know. Uh, did you have three days of herb drops in the nose? I already know Aaron does that with Shailene all the time. Uh, then there's five days of enemas and then there's yoga and meditation throughout. So basically it's just laxative and vomit obsession um, for a few days where you just shit uncontrollably and you vomit. Un- I don't know why you would want to brag about that. No, uh, for real. Personally, uh, when everyone's expecting you to announce that you're going to stay retire leave just go oh yeah guys uh as a troll i just shit my brains out right. for the past six days is, so uh, didn't he, uh, uh, isn't he breaking up did he break up with shailene i guess not uh it sounds like they called off the engage they might have called off the engagement but how he talked about her today and like that Instagram, Instagram post, post yeah. it does not sound like a guy that broke up got broken up with or he broke up with her uh, maybe he's trying to get her back and he's just this desperate. Um, but no, you, I, th- I, I think they might've just called off the engagement. And did you watch, like did you watch the spectacular now? No. Oh, banger. As Shaylin Woodley, you'd give it like a half star on letterbox though, but it was a banger. <laughs> it was a banger. Um, anyway, let's move on to the dunk contest, not Aaron Rodgers. We'll talk about him more later. Dunk contest. Worst fucking shit I've ever seen in my entire life. Horrible. And like you said, we got spoiled by Zach Levine and Aaron Gordon and their unbelievable dunk contest. But even so after, it wasn't like the worst thing I've ever seen. The, I mean, today was the worst thing I've ever seen. Um, the contestants were Juan Toscano Anderson, who is easily the best player in the league. Don't get it twisted. My second favorite player in the league. That's I was rooting for him, obviously. Um, then there was Jalen Green. There was Cole Anthony, and then there was the winner in Obi Toppin. Obi Toppin, and I guess a lot of people would say the best dunk was his last one where he did like the backboard into the rim. But even that at best to me is like an eight. And my biggest problem with the dunk contest is the fact that they give sixes as a minimum. There's no point. Like it makes no sense that you can miss all of your dunks and then like do a stupid dunk and get a six for it. To me, if you like, if you're Jalen Green in that first attempt where he's trying to do the off the back side of the backboard through the legs dunk, which would have been pretty cool, if he would have done that, yeah, that's a really good dunk, but he didn't. He failed several times. That to me is like a zero, in my opinion. I mean, not let's a be six. real, Kurt. It's not a six. 
A Let's six be real. is above average. That's what it says. That was not an above average performance. Let's be real, Kurt. With how they grade them, though, a six, if you get all sixes, you're not winning. Um, you're just the, it doesn't even matter. It's, it's, it's just a part it's just a participation thing. That was like when I was in freshman year of high school. Uh my my computer programming teacher said, if you don't even turn anything in, you at least get a 60%. And I was like, okay. And I had an A plus in the class. And then the final was like 30% of our grade. And then I did the math and I was like, I'm not going to do the final. And we have a month to do the final. So I never did the final. And then I just sat in class for a month. That's kind of how the dunk contest was. So that's a nice uh, real world application of me, a freshman in high school. Uh, If you all were interested in that, I know it's very interesting. Um, But I will say this. Uh, Yes, the dunk contest was awful. I made a fucking highlight reel of all the misses that this dunk contest had. Uh, It was that bad. I mean, Jalen Green was over half the video. Not even kidding. Um, He missed so many dunks and it looked like he just gave up because the whole arena literally lost its life after like Jalen Green went up there and missed everything. And the dunks before him weren't even that good, in all honesty. Um, there was only one dunk on the night that I thought would have been really freaking good if he made it. And that was Cole Anthony's second dunk. Do you know which one I'm talking about? It was the one where he threw it and then he ran up, caught it, and then he did like the round the back and like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. He like hit the rim on it and it bounced. So if he hit that one, I think that would have been great. And he definitely would have made it, but he didn't make it at all. He missed all of his dunk attempts. Um, but that was like the only one I thought was, would have been maybe a 50 worthy if, if they went, but no one went all out for this dunk contest. They were all really reserved and everyone was missing. It sucked. Um, but what I will say is recently, Aside from Zach Levine and Aaron Gordon, the NBA has just been picking garbage dunk contest contestants. Have you realized this? In oh, recent yeah, years? I have. But I think it's also because none of the stars want to play in it. Like, imagine Ja in the dunk contest. He would be incredible. If you got I... a dunk contest with Aaron Gordon, again, I know he said he doesn't want to do it, but like Gordon, Levine, Ja Morant, and... Zion when he's not eating burgers. Yeah. yeah. That'd be the most insane thing of all time because people forget also though, like back in the eighties, back in the nineties, you had Dominique Wilkins and Michael Jordan compete in every single dunk contest. That was the norm. Like they didn't really care about anything. And then obviously you go to the all-star game, which we'll get to later. And they flat out tried their hardest for it. I think, and that's why I I like the all-star game. Now I don't know if it's like a transition or we'll get to it more later, but I like the all-star game better because there at least is the initiative for charity. Like yes. we're definitely seeing more competitive fight out of these guys. Like the LeBron mm-hmm. last, the LeBron game winner, that was solid defense. That was a really good shot. Like that was good all around basketball. And that's why I wish in like the NBA, like the MLB all-star game, when the initiative was, if you won that, you got home field advantage for the world series. We've talked about this on this podcast, but every all-star game, everything like that, needs to have some sort of initiative to where these players are actually trying. Like what does, what does $10,000 each to every player mean to the NBA? Fucking nothing, nothing, nothing. but there it's that. I mean, the NBA, I get like the charity. That's cool. But more so talking about like MLB needs to have some NFL, the pro bowl. I mean, come on, that shit's horrendous. It's just, <laughs> we want to see the best of the best athletes play against each other, but we want to see it at the highest level. Yeah, and the thing is with, like, the NFL, the Pro Bowl, like, they were playing two-hand touch this year because everyone doesn't want to play in it anymore because they are afraid of injury and they don't want to get injured because, you know, it's a football. Like, I would love to watch a Pro Bowl where players are giving it their all. Like, you know, that would be one of the greatest NFL games ever probably. Um, But no, because they don't want to get injured. And I think that's fully fair and whatever. Um, With NBA, like, the thing is they're trying a lot harder now on the all-star game after the new format, because the new format's great. I will say that uh, I really like the changes, um, especially the fourth quarter being first to a certain score wins. I, I really like that. I think that's a good change um, as well as the charity. I think the charity incorporation is really awesome. Um, 
but like that's what's kind of scaring other people away i guess because they're afraid of injury even though no one's ever gotten can you think of someone that's gotten injured in the all-star game i can't I can um, like if so like when you look at the dunk contest like 2022 you have obi top like obi top is the only one i think like has a case to be in the dunk contest because if you saw him playing in college he dunked all over everyone so that one made sense but like you juan toscano anderson does anyone think of him as a dunker i know you and me are the juan toscano fan club but that's my fucking boy (laughs) i love the jersey he brought out i thought that was sick in the shoes but like he wasn't that good i mean jalen green was awful cole anthony was okay and then last year of anthony simons obi topping cassius stanley okay um 2020 had dwight howard when he's like 35 okay why um pat Connaughton, sure even though this dunk uh, 2020's dunk contest was actually pretty solid if you do if you remember it uh aaron gordon and Derek jones jr went back and forth a couple times um do you remember that dunk contest? I do. I do. It was actually a pretty solid dunk contest aside from Dwight. Uh, uh, and then 2019, nah. 2018, nah. Like, they, it's just kind of like Glenn Robinson winning over Aaron Gore. Like, oh, my God. Some of these are like – they'll, like, throw a center in there at some times, and it's really weird. Like, do you remember the year with DeAndre Jordan? Yeah. Uh, we jumped that, over the car. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, no, that was Blake. Like, that was Blake. That was Blake, yeah. What did Jordan uh, do? He did something I, cool, too. I don't remember. Um, but they'll throw in some random names here and there, and it's like, why? We come in a dunk contest to watch not a G League two-way player, you know, playing in these. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, the NBA has to, like, throw a bag at John Morant next year to be in it. That's all I got to say. Like, he – Every dunk he did in the all-star game was like 50s in this year's dunk contest easily because they were all incredible. Um, But I guess we could transition to the all-star game. What would you think? How did you like it? And uh, You want me to be completely honest with you, Sam? Sure. I didn't watch it. (laughs) Wow. But biggest takeaways, and I think it's everyone's biggest takeaway – it's just how fucking good Steph Curry is. He makes it look so easy. Um, and I think I, I think you can make a very strong argument that Steph Curry is the face of the NBA. Because so many kids nowadays want to just be like Steph Curry. And that further proved it. Like Steph Curry, say what you want. He's Him and LeBron, to me, are the only athletes to where I really go like I'm still utterly shocked at how fucking amazing they are. And LeBron more so it's just because he's doing it at such an old age, but Steph Curry still playing basketball. I'm like, you are just, we've never seen anyone like you ever in the sport. And it's super cool to watch um, 16, three pointers. He just could not miss. Um, and then with the 50 points, I think the record's like 52, 52. Yeah. Anthony Davis. So sucks that he didn't get it one three away from not from getting it, but regardless, still an unbelievable performance by Steph Curry. Um, but yeah, I didn't watch it because I hate the all-star game and I hate the NBA. It was actually pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Um, I like the new format. I think yeah. it's really good. I really uh, liked it last year when they started the format. So yeah, the new format is great. I think it's very effective. Uh, it actually gets players to try. And I remember with the first year that they did it, um the fourth quarter was like a really real game. good yeah it was it was really good um so i'm glad that they're doing it uh i think they started it two years ago um all right so not then two not, years not this year it was the year that kobe died so yeah it was two years ago um so yeah like that was the first year they did it was so good uh it was really good and that it's i think last year wasn't close this year was close yeah it got a little close um but team lebron still came out on top they gave steph every chance he could to get that other three to get the record yeah um but he kept brinking bricking them so lebron's just like all right i'll hit a game winner in cleveland that was that was sick that was sick which is awesome i think that's cool uh but otherwise 
it was a good, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, Steph Curry going nuclear in the third quarter was pretty awesome. Uh, John Morant's pretty amazing. And then you have all these like cool other fun moments. I mean, the all-star game, like you're not watching it to be like, wow, what a great game. You're watching it be like, holy shit, Steph Curry just hit 16 threes. Holy shit, John Morant just jumped above the rim. And you're just, you're watching it for like those little highlight moments. That's what you're watching the all-star game for. Um, I have two other things associated with the all-star game. Then we can move on that I wanted to ask you about. Um, How did you feel about LeBron's comments about Bronny and Cleveland himself? No problem with it. I, I think so many, like, I don't have any problem with LeBron wanting to play with his son. And obviously it's like, Oh, if that I'm not ruling out that it's in Cleveland. Like that was kind of the same thing we saw when he went to Miami. He was like, I'm not ruling out a possible return. And he did promise that he was going to come back and win a championship for Cleveland and he had that promise. Not that it's to the same extent now, but he's not ruling out the possibility that he could go back to Cleveland. And imagine if he wins a championship in Cleveland with the sun. That'd be the most iconic thing that ever happens in the NBA. So I don't have a problem with it. I think it's cool. And like you said, he has stated very publicly he wants to play with the sun. And if it can't happen in LA, he'll go and do it in Cleveland. Um, I thought, well, you can ask your second question, then I'll have another comment. Well, um, the second question doesn't relate to this topic, but um, does Bronny become the most overdrafted player ever because of the chance of getting LeBron on your team? Well, I will say, I think Bronny is getting a lot of hate when it comes to high school basketball because so many people were like, he's not that good. He's only good because of his dad. The guy's actually a really solid basketball player. He's improved his shot drastically over the last couple of months. This is the past year and his junior year. He's been very good. He has excellent court vision. He's a really solid player. He's not the best of the best. It's not, that's why he's not a five star. He's a four star, but even so, I do agree with you because if you're getting Bronny, you're more likely to get LeBron in that sense. But I could easily see Bronny going to a college. I don't know where he go to college. I think Duke is up there, but but that was more so like because LeBron respected the hell out of Coach K. And now that John Shire is going to head coach, we don't know about that. I could see Kentucky. Um, it's definitely going to be a blue blood school. Um, but I I don't think he's going to go to college. I think he's going to go to the G League. Yeah, I don't know. I definitely could see him going to the college still. We'll have to see. Even so, though, I could really see him being a very solid player coming out of high school. And then, like, he's worth the lottery for pick or whatever he is. Yeah, because right now he's not a first rounder. Correct. Um, Correct. We got, I mean, he could, you could make a case he shouldn't get drafted. Um, nah, he, he should. He's okay. But he's like, in terms of draft, he's like, He's a second rounder at best. He's not. Yeah. It's his namesake, obviously. Um, but I, I I just think it's interesting to think like, oh, I'm a, I'm a team with the first round pick that I can throw away. Like Oklahoma City, like by that time, Bronny comes in. I have four first round picks I could use. Oh, let's throw a first for LeBron James Jr. And then we could sign LeBron, you know, right. like, like. I'm just interested to see how that plays out because that'd be kind of funny. Uh, but my other question was about um, the 75th anniversary halftime. Uh, did you enjoy it? it was yeah, a, I, thought it was it was I thought cool it was cool. I thought it was cool. There are a lot of memes with it, like the fact that Carl Malone was on Zoom because he can't stay within five feet of any kids, which I thought that was really funny. <laughs> um and I thought the coolest moment was, you know, the picture where I don't know if you saw it on Twitter, but it's like a headshot of the old era taking a picture together, then the new era taking a picture together, um, which I thought was really cool. And then obviously you had the moment between LeBron James and Michael Jordan, which we can have the debate on who's the better player, but it's really cool to see the mutual respect they have for each other. LeBron wore 23 because Michael Jordan was his favorite player a lot of cool things came from that. So I thought in all the NBA 75 ceremony was very cool. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yep. But now we're moving on to an actually good sport. Unlike the NBA, let's talk about the NFL to wrap up this podcast. Uh, We have 10 quarterbacks that we want to say 
um, that we're going to mention. And we're going to talk about where we think they're going to end up before the 2022-23 season kicks off. Um, you ready, Sam? Oh, I am so ready. How are you going to order this? Are you going to start from like hottest name to coldest name or you get to sprinkle them? I was just going to do random. All right. Sprinkle them. Go for so it. We'll start with a big name guy. Oh, how big of a name is this? Aaron Rodgers. Oh, okay. We're starting. All right. We're, we're starting with the biggest. All right. So where do you think Aaron Rodgers will be next season? Green Bay. Nice. I like it. I, I think I, I think he's staying. Um, I'll, I'll let you answer them. We'll talk about it. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to retire. I the thing is, Aaron Rodgers has too much of an ego to retire in the same offseason as Tom Brady. There is just no way he retires in the same offseason as Brady. I just can't see it. There's just no way. I'm sorry, but I can't see it. We'll have um, to see. I think I think it's a strong possibility. Um, just kind of a gut feeling in the sense. I think it's either obviously he goes back to Green Bay or he retires. But just because of kind of what – I don't want to say what I've been seeing because obviously we can't really interpret anything that's been happening. But a lot of it's just I think it's uh, – he's going to retire, which is crazy because – the two MVP candidates are going to retire after their seasons, which would be unbelievable. Yeah. Like, I mean, I also agree. I think it's going to be green Bay or retire. Um, after the season, I was campaigning for him to get traded. Um, but I, I still kind of believe that, but if they kept him, I'm not going to be mad obviously because it's the MVP. Uh, but the thing is like, uh, everything that's come out since then has like led me to believe, yeah, he's not getting traded and the Packers are bending over backwards to have him back. So I've kind of just accepted the fact that he will probably be staying if he's, if he's going to still play football. Um, so I'm fine with it. I'm cool with it. I mean, I love Aaron Rodgers, and I think he's a fantastic player and an MVP. He's a four-time MVP, the second player to win four MVPs in NFL history. Um, but yeah, I agree. I think it's gonna be Packers or retire. I do think he at least plays one more year. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to see how this offseason plays out because we had that whole thing today. Um, it's sounding like I man, it's tough because. Like leading uh, leading up to yesterday, let me let me just break down my my Packers uh, emotions over the past few weeks. Yeah. Right after the game, right after San Francisco game, I want to trade him. I want to rebuild. Okay, I, I kind of held that for about two weeks, and then like all the news started coming out that he's like, or not, yeah, all the news started coming out that he's like happy and all that. I was like, all right, well, keeping him, I'm cool with. We'll run it back. Awesome, and then. I was kind of like, if we trade him, cool. We we can try with Jordan Love. If we trade him and Love sucks, cool. We can use the ninth pick and draft someone. I don't care because I'm assuming it's Denver. Uh, and then if we keep him, cool, because we'll still be a Super Bowl contender or at least a playoff team. But the one that always sucked most for me is him retiring because that means we are fucked for at least a year we can't reload that fast um but i just i don't know man i think he's gonna play at least one more year i just have a hunch he knows how good of a player he is and i just don't think he would want to end it the same year as brady like i just don't think he does and i think he has that drive to at least give it one more shot because that last dance mentality he was like, oh, we're going for it. We're really going to go for it. And then it like falls short this hard. Imagine trying to and, – and falling short knowing that you underperformed because he knows he did not play well in that game against San Francisco. Like falling short in that regard and knowing that you were a part of falling short, I think that's going to leave a little bit of drive left in him to try and 
continue his career at least one more time with the Packers. Cause I don't see him playing because I, I actually agree with you. I don't think he's going to play for that much longer. I think he'll play one, maybe two or three years. That's getting lucky. Um, and I just don't see him being like, Oh, I want to get traded and I'm only going to play one or two years with this team. I just don't see him doing that. Uh, I think he'll stay. If he's going to do that, he will do that in green Bay because of comfortability's sake. Um, Sorry, I talked way too much there. You're good. I just realized something, too. We did not have Wentz on our list. Do you want to add him in? Oh, yes, we can add him in. Yes. Sounds good. So we'll now have 11 instead of 10. All right, moving on next. We He's he's so forgetful, forgettable. Yeah, he just sucks, so it doesn't matter. Deshaun Watson. I'm going to make this quick. On the couch. I agree. I don't think he plays next year. I don't think he does. And I don't, I, I still think it's silly for teams to take so much of a gamble on a guy who we have no idea what his off the field status looks like. No teams are going to willingly give up so much assets for it. Like Houston's asking for and rightfully so, because he's a great player. Um, we'll move on now to our first rookie, Kenny Pickett. Do you go? Yeah. Washington. I'm really happy with that. <laughs> um, I I think Pickett screams Carolina at six. I think because how I see it is Matt Rule will make a decision similar to Jay Gruden did with Haskins to where it's not the best situation long term, but a situation to save his job in Carolina. And he understands he can't win with Sam Darnold. I think he's going to take it. Think he's going to take a gamble on Kenny Pickett. He has the ties to Rule already. Um, that's, yeah. that's my thing. Yeah. It's just taking a quarterback at six. I agree. Draft. I agree. Uh, but what do we always say, Sam teams get greedy when it comes oh. to draft night. Uh Oh, something happened. What are you there? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. It just lagged the fuck out. All right. What, what? All right, well, you'll have to cut that out. Um, Just uh, so I'll just say my thing again. Yeah. But drafting a quarterback at six, man, I I don't know about that in this draft. But what do we always say come draft night? We're like teams will get greedy, especially when it comes to QB. And I think Carolina is going to understand. Look, let's just take the bait or not bait. Let's just take the pressure that we're going to get. Let's just take Pickett. That's how I think it's going to go. So we'll see. It'll be interesting. Next. I got Washington for him though. But I, I think, I'd be, I think I'd Washington. Be. I think Washington's going to trade up for him. That's what I think is going to happen. I would be so. perfectly fine with Pickett's in Washington. How far would you trade up though? No more than like eight. Who's that eight? Uh, it's a great question. Let's I think look. it's the Jets. No, the Jets are at ten. Draft Chicago. No, they're at seven. All oh right. My God, why can't I think of it? Jacksonville, Detroit, Houston, New York, then the Giants, and then the Panthers, Giants, Falcons. Falcons, yeah. You could do that. Definitely and then the Broncos are at nine, so maybe we jump them if they don't get a veteran or go through free agency through that. But we'll talk about them in a second. Moving on, Kirk Cousins. I think he stays in Minnesota. I agree. Cool. Russell Wilson. This one's interesting. He should be a commander. That's all I have to say. (laughs) He's our commander in chief. Is that your prediction? No. no, no. Oh, okay. I was about to say. (laughs) I, so I, I've, Sam, I've had a, um, I've had an argument with my dad over the last couple of days. Oh, okay. Regarding what we should do at QB because Carl, him being the old head he is. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Um, But he's always like, Oh, what's um? He he thinks of it as like you can form a really good roster around like an RA quarterback, which I'm the complete opposite. I think you need an elite quarterback and able to contend. So I'm like, we need to go all in on Russ. I don't care if it's a couple first round picks. I don't care if it includes Chase Young. That's the price you got to pay for an elite level quarterback. Is yep. like no 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 no. Like he's on the route of like. Like he loved the Fitzpatrick move last year because it was a safe option. He thought we can make no, and I'm like, no, 
So <laughs> I really want Washington or the commanders to really consider Russell Wilson, but I think he returns to Seattle. Um, I think if Russ gets traded, it is going to be to a contending team um, like a Tampa or a New Orleans. Um, I think New Orleans would throw the kitchen sink to get Russ. I don't know how they would get his contract, but I think they would try everything in their power to make that work. Um, but yeah, I think he'll run it back one more year with Seattle and see how it goes next year. Yeah. Cause I this it's... year, everything kind of went wrong for them. And then also at the end of the season, they kind of caught fire and got better. Um, so I think he, that'll change his mind a little bit and they'll see how it goes next year. Cool. All right. Matt Corral. I think he, <sighs> I think he, this is going to be a weird prediction. I think he ends up on the saints. I had him going there in my mock or no, they haven't going to Pittsburgh or there. I don't remember. Um, yeah, man, this one's tough. It, the thing is, I don't know if I think the Saints are going to get a veteran or a rookie because I could see either or for them. Well, yeah, I will get there in a second, but I have like further explanation on what the Saints are going to do when we get to Jameis. Yeah, I get I can agree with your take then. Um, I'm taking way too long on this. Uh, I'm going to go. Yeah, I I think I'll agree with you. Uh, I don't feel great about it. I do think he gets drafted in like the twenties. That's what I'll say. Okay. Um, I do think Tennessee's a sleeper for Matt Corral though. I just say Matt. Okay. All right. Uh, Next up we have Teddy Bridgewater. I'm going to get so much hate for saying this. I think he's staying. Okay. I think he's going to stay in Denver. I think, and I think they're going to draft a guy and they're going to have Teddy in front of him for at least a bit. I think he's going to go to a team as a backup, but is a reliable backup. And that's the San Francisco. Ooh. Kind of just feeling that Lance is going to be obviously the starter, which we'll get into when we talk about Jimmy G. But Lance being the starter, we've seen instances where these first, second-year guys kind of have a really solid veteran as their backup, just in case anything happens. And I think we're going to see that again here with Teddy. I think he goes to the Niners, which would be kind of crazy. I think that's an interesting – that's interesting. I like that. That's a Thank nice you. sleeper pick. Does he get traded there or is he getting cut and then he signs there? Cut. Okay. Well, I think <sighs> – The thing yeah. is, though – I guess I shouldn't be saying this. I don't have Denver – on here for so anyone I guess, so i guess i'm assuming they'll go down the route of rookie but then even in that instance maybe they would just resign him you don't have any of the top three rookies going to him though that's yeah you're right <laughs> and they have picked nine so like well, if they took like a malik willis and then i mean as the malik willis fan club leader i i as someone i mean teddy being in front of him makes sense um, maybe they go back to lock dude there's i'm telling dude there is a portion of broncos fans that want to play drew lock i'm not kidding uh as as a packers fan that has been on so many posts of broncos posing on aaron Rodgers, i've seen so many broncos fans and the replies be like i don't want to trade for a 38 year old mvp 38 year old quarterback just let drew lock play and i was like no God, no, don't do that. Um, I, all right, well, maybe I should have thought of this more, but fuck off, it don't matter. All right, (laughs) moving on. Jameis Winston, Nola, I think he goes back to the Saints. Yep, so like I said with Jameis earlier, I think that instance would put Jameis and Corral in a QE battle for the starting job, which I think would be really cool to watch if he's Um, recovered by then. Yeah, all right, Malik Willis. I think Pittsburgh is trading the farm to go get him. I think he's a commander. Ooh. The commander. He's the commander in chief. Um, I would I, I would be a fan of that. I would like that. 
I think um, Pittsburgh's. I, I think Pittsburgh's going to go get him. I, I think that the truth about Tomlin loving him is is a fact. Yeah, I think that's I, true. I, I can agree with that. Um, shame though, you know that Washington's going to snag him. I mean, and that's. I, I mean, dude, the the Najee Harris rumors about him to Pittsburgh was the worst kept draft secret last right. year. It started so early, and then they never slowed down. The Malik Willis to Pittsburgh has already started. The Pittsburgh's front office just can't can't get over hiding anything. Um, I can see it. I can see it. I do wonder if if Pittsburgh were to get Malik Willis, would they have uh, like a starter in front of him for a bit? That's... Mason Rudolph, Dwayne Haskins, the GOAT. <laughs> Look, Malik Willis is my QB one, but like. I, I'm not comfortable starting him right away, like yeah. at all. Uh, you got to let him sit for a year at least. Uh, but the thing, yeah, I, I think Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh stuff is real. And we've seen if they get enamored with someone that they will go get them re- in recent years. Uh, we saw that with Devin Bush. Uh, they traded a lot to get from like pick 20 something to 10 to get Devin Bush. Now, obviously that was not a good trade because Devin Bush is stinky dog poo. Uh, but I think they would do that for a quarterback. I think they're going to jump Denver to get them. They're going to trade with Atlanta. Dude, I am so excited for draft content. I am too. Yeah. It's going to be fun. And I, can, I can't watch film this year, which is going to suck. I, I, I'm very sad that I can't watch that much film this year. I can't watch a lot of film either. I'll explain to you after the pod. Well, we'll have uh, Sully do it. God, no. All right. <laughs> Jimmy G. I've held this stance for so long and i'm going to live and die by it i think he's going to be a carolina panther he's a colt i don't think that's a bad take i think i think indianapolis kind of realizes they were obviously held back by Wentz last year they started off strong but he was really bad to end the year frank reich has basically publicly stated he fucking hates everything about carson Wentz, just not in the literal sense um, just by everything like his body language, says, yeah. Not, not, um, not, uh, and I kind of compared the situation in Indy, kind of similar to San Francisco. Very well structured rosters, really solid defenses, and if you can have like a Jimmy G there in Indianapolis, no doubt about it, they're a playoff team. But the whole question is, can you go to a Super Bowl and win a Super Bowl with Jimmy G as your QB? But I think Indianapolis is, realizes it's an upgrade over Wentz, so. It's it's so complicated with the Colts because they don't have a first round pick to trade this year. So it's it and they don't have a first round pick to use on a quarterback. Yeah. So it, it's complicated for what they can do. So that's going to be very intriguing to see how they decide to offload mm-hmm. once if they're going to offload once. Yeah. When they offload once. Um, speaking of once, where do you think he's going? I have no idea. Um, I don't know who would want him. I, I, I'm genuinely serious. I think they're going to cut him and he's just going to be a backup. I, I think that I'm serious about that. I don't think anyone's going to, I think the bucks will maybe take a flyer on him. If he comes, if he becomes free. Um, but I, I don't think anyone's going to actively try and get Carson Wentz in a trade or sign him. Yeah. I said, I said this team, but I kind of, as I think about it more, don't like it, but I need to give them a QB is Pittsburgh, but he just seems like a guy Tomlin would hate. I agree. So, but then I feel like they could also go down a route where you have Wentz and then you go down, if you trade up for Willis, I could see that happening. If they can get Wentz for a cheap route and obviously you'd have to complicate a lot of things in order for that to happen, but we'll see about that. So that's where we have all of the QPs ending up. It should be a fun couple of months ahead of us. Um, we'll be sure to do our fixer upper series coming up where we'll have some uh, NFL teams uh, making some moves for some quarterbacks. We got draft content coming up. Uh, we got some drafts, not like NFL drafts, but like off topic drafts coming up. We got a lot coming up on the podcast. So make sure you guys are tuning in. Just started our YouTube channel. Uh, make sure to subscribe to that. Uh, make sure to follow us on Instagram at all sports culture and at ASC highlighted or highlighted ASC. One of those usernames, try both because you love us a lot. And until next time, we will see you later. Thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye.